God some praise. Hallelujah. He is good. He is faithful in the valley and in the mountain tops. He is with us always in Jesus name and everybody said amen. 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 Good afternoon Feast Bellevue PM family. You know, we are live and uh live right at this very moment. And I think that's something that we need to celebrate, that we are live, that even if we may be in different places, that we can come together, we can sync up together and worship together and receive the powerful word of God together. And so we're grateful for all of you who are joining us at this time. And I just want to give a shout out to those of you I'm seeing now in the comments. Hello, Brother Marco. Um, shout out to Doc Ren. I saw, I think, Dr. Annette earlier also. Sister Clarence. Um, uh, Sis Anna. Shani is there. My wife is watching. And all of you there, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us this Sunday afternoon. So we celebrate that we are live, but we ought to celebrate as well that we are alive. Now, we are alive in December 2020 with the year that has been with the year that we have went through and if you're still alive today that is a blessing come on type it out down in the comments i am live and alive we are live and alive so praise god indeed and for those of you who are joining us for the very first time we are glad and blessed that you are here that you're joining us you know the feast is really pretty much a family of friends journeying together to be better than who we were yesterday. See, that's simply the goal. That we want to be better than yesterday, better today than yesterday with Jesus. And so we're glad that you're coming along with us in this journey. Now, speaking of journey, um, maybe you've heard already the news, Vey and I are brand new in this so-called parenting journey with the coming of our son, Kyler. I think it's just been 10 days, okay? And people have been asking me, people have been messaging me, asking me, Mike, kamusta? How are you guys? How's Kyler? How are you in Vea? And this is how I would respond. I would tell them, no sleep, but no reason to complain. No sleep, but no reason to complain. No sleep, Dahil, I think out of the 10 nights that we've have him, had him so far, we've only had one good night. So we are like zombies during the day, nabangang at walang tulog, walang pahinga. But it's all good. It's all part of the journey. But we still say, in spite of all of that, that we have no reason to complain. We have no reason to complain because God is still good. He has been providing. He has been blessing. And He is faithful. And that for us is enough reason to be grateful. And so friends, maybe right now in your life, there is an area of your life where there is a lack, there is a need. Maybe there's scarcity in your life right now. For us, it's no sleep. Maybe for you, it's no money. For some, hindi lang no money, no honey din. Walang love life, walang, walang boyfriend, walang girlfriend. Or, or for some, maybe it's no work. Or maybe you find yourself in December of 2020, having had plans in the, in the beginning of the year, and none of them came to pass this past year. And so no goals, no dreams. So friends, whatever that no is for you right now, whatever is um, the lack in your life, the need in your life, the scarcity in your life, you've got to remind yourself. You've got to believe in faith. We've got to believe in faith that God is still working in your behalf, that you may not feel it, you may not see it, that he is moving in and through and with you. To what? To fill that which is lacking in your life. To fill that lack, that void in your life. To, to supply that need. To provide abundance to that scarcity so that you would overflow. And if you have that hope, if you have that belief in faith that God is with you, that God is for you, and that he will fill that lack. I believe that is enough reason to be grateful. Yes. In fact, uh, the psalmist says this, 
in Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. This is just going to be very quick. Allow me just to share this with you. It says there, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He has done for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. And He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. And here it is. Here it is. Listen up. Listen up. He fills my life. He fills your life with good things. With good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Friends, my prayer as we begin our peace today is that God will fill that lack in your life, that God will supply that need and provide abundance to that scarcity this week, that you will see a supernatural move of God in your life to begin to fill that void, that lack in your life. And when it happens, just as the psalmist says here, when that happens, you will regain your youth. Sabi niya dito, my youth is renewed like eagles. That you will regain your youth. That you will regain strength. That you will regain joy, fulfillment, and passion for living. That may have somehow dissipated or have gone away this past year. That you would regain that youth, that youthful spirit within you. Because God is filling all that is lacking in your life. Amen. 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 Let's pray together our favorite prayer in the feast. If you believe all of that today, let's come together once more in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. And everybody said and everybody typed and everybody declared, amen, 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 amen. It's great to see everyone here in the chats. Hello, Flo. Hello, Shani. Hello, Boji. Hello, Zara. It's good that you're joining us today. So are you ready for the Word of God? I hope you are. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome and powerful today. But before that, allow me just to lead you into our giving. And we do this right um, close to worship because giving, especially giving in church, we believe is a spiritual act of worship. So let me just share with you a word on giving. You know, in the recent Feast Conference, I got the blessing to, or the privilege to be able to interview certain people during our Grand Feast. And one of those guys were, uh, was Brother Monching Bueno, our Feast Builder in Feast San Mateo. And I just could remember how he shared, because he was in a makeup studio just like this. So whatever, you're, whatever you saw on screen during that interview where he was, that was pretty much a small spot in their house na maayos because they had to use it f- for the interview, for the shoot, for the video footage. But he was telling us na yung paligid nun, nung maliit na makeup studio na yun, um, the surrounding area was all dirty, was all messed up. Why? Because uh, nabaha nga yung bahay nila just recently and all their tambak na mga gamit nandun pa. Tapos sabi niya, put- putikan pa daw yung, yung floor where he was. And he was telling us that he really didn't have time to, to fix all of that because he was out. He was out distributing relief goods. He was out um, giving aid to people, organizing relief efforts. I mean, we honored just really the selflessness of that man that in spite of what he was going through, having experienced a flood, he was going out, helping out others who also experienced that flood. But I remember this, and it really touched me and blessed me because that was, I think, a few weeks ago, and it was Christ the King Sunday. And he had a reflection, given his situation, given where he was, that his surroundings was all messed up. Um, he said this, he, he said, sabi niya, naniniwala ako na yung trono ni Lord, the throne of God, he was saying, um, the surroundings of that was messy, or is messy. That the throne of God is beautiful, majestic, but the surroundings of that 
is messy because why? He said, maybe it's because God doesn't really have time to clean it up or to fix it up because he's constantly going out to help people, to serve people, to bring uh, the lost back to him and to clean people up and to transform lives. And he's busy doing that because he is a God who gives, who loves, who serves. And so I pray that that, 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 that idea sticks in your mind, in your heart today as you come to give and that you would give generously, not just through the feast. And I always say this, not just through the feast, but through your life, that you would continue to live generous lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I think um, there will be several ways on how to give, and I have to look at this screen to be able to see that. So you can give to, um, you can go to feastalabang.com slash give, and there you can make a credit card um, uh, donation or payment, and then you, or not payment, donation. <laughs> you can do it also through PayPal. Um, there's also an East West Bank account that's flashed on the screen. Um, you can screenshot this if you wish from your phone. And then I think we have a BDO account as well. There we go. There have a, there's a BDO account. And then what's the last way? There is also Gcash. So you can visit all of those details at feastalabang.com slash give. So you can give your best today. Amen? Amen. Now, now that that's done, let's go into the word of God. And I hope you're, 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 you're listening, you're leaning in, and you're ready. So because Ben and I um, is in this season of transition to parenting and taking care of Kyler, and it's the first few weeks, I filed for a paternity leave. And I'm thankful that I was allowed to do that. So I'm just hosting this session today. I won't be preaching, but in my place is definitely, I would say, an even better preacher. All right. Um, he is both brilliant theologically and brilliant pastorally. And, and what I mean when I say that, he's brilliant theological, theologically because he is um, master's in theology and he's, he has a prolific mind and, and, and really just, um, he can think so well about who God is and present it to people and preach it to people in an understandable way. But at the same time, he is also very pastoral. He has a heart for people, a heart for the lost like no other. And so having that balance is so rare, and he has it. And I know you will be blessed, you will be touched, you will be empowered by the Word of God today that will be preached by none other than my brother-in-law. He is the feast builder for Feast Bikutan, and I'm grateful and blessed that he agreed to preach again live from this morning to preach again live this afternoon for all of us so that I can take this paternity leave and so that you will be blessed theologically and pastorally through the word of God today through Brother Velden Lim. Come on. Hello. Hi, Feast Bell View PM. Thank you, Mike, for that wonderful introduction. Hindi po ako nag-utos sa kanya noon para puri-purihin niya ako. Pero maraming salamat, Brother Mike. And alam nyo, believe din ako sa feast builder ninyo, no? naka-paternity leave, pero nag-host pa rin, di ba? So, hindi pa rin niya matiis. Siya talaga ang meron talagang puso para sa pamilya niya, para sa inyo. Hindi niya kayo maiwan kahit paternity leave. But I'm here to preach on his behalf yung, yung meet ng talk natin ngayon. And it's my privilege to preach to preach once again to you Feast Bellevue PM family. Meron nga lang ako isang namimiss. Alam nyo, ang sarap mag-guest preacher sa Feast Bellevue PM eh. Ang namimiss ko lang, ngayong online lahat, wala akong nakain na siomay. Hindi ako napakain ni Tita Mirna ng siomay. So shout out dyan sa mga servants ng Feast Bellevue PM. Thank you for having me today. And anyway, I'd like to jump quickly to our talk because this is a meaty talk and dami ninyong matututunan and I hope that God will speak to you today. We are still continuing our series entitled Ascend, How to Encounter God and Talk to is entitled Rain and Rescue, Ulan at Kaligtasan sa Tagalog. And you see my dear brothers and sisters, in this entire series, we are going to talk about the role of mountaintops. In fact, last week pinag-usapan natin the mountain sa the Garden Mountain of Eden, kung nandun kung saan nandun si Eva at si Adan. And today we are going to talk about Mount Ararat. And why are we talking about mountaintops? Because in the Bible, it is believed that powerful God encounters happened on mountaintops. And my prayer today is this. 
that you encounter God at the feast today. I want you to type it out right now. I want you to declare, I will encounter God today. Go. Go ahead and type it out. Be an encouragement to one another. May God encounter you today. Amen? Now, last week, pinag-usapan natin the Mountain Garden of Eden. And this is a very crucial mountain in the history of salvation of man. Why? Because the Garden Mountain of Eden was the divine dream. It was the ideal place where God and man and all of creation lived together in beautiful harmony. Ay, nako, imagine niyo si Eva at Adan walking with the living God on this cosmic mountain called Garden of Eden, doing HHWWPSSP, holding hands while walking by pasway sway pa, siguro pa pito pito pa. Why? Because everything is beautiful, everything is in harmony, everything is at peace. Ang ganda, perfect. But sadly, ito ang problema. Because of sin, that perfection did not last. And you know the story na tukso si Eva dun sa serpent, kinain yung fruit of the tree of knowledge. And then, a few verses later, they failed to trust God. Ang ganda na ng plano ng Diyos para sa kanila, pero nagsarili pa ng diskarte. Patay tayo dyan. They took matters into their own hands. So here's what happened. You know what happened next? They were sent out of the garden mountain And then after that, things went downhill from there. Nawala ang lahat ng ganda ng Garden of Eden na parang bula. Sayang. And then here's what happened. Here's what happened next. A few chapters after in Genesis 4, we meet Adam and Eve's sons. Dalawa yung anak nila. Si Cain at si Abel. Cain and Abel. And you know what happened? Cain murders his brother Abel. Bakit? Nainggit dahil mas maganda yung offering ng kapatid niya kaysa sa kanya. And you know what, brothers and sisters? I guess the message of God in the story is this. Every time you hurt someone, you're actually hurting a brother. And then, that's what happened. After Cain killed Abel, eto na, let's move forward. Eto na, fast forward tayo. Here's what happened. Cain builds the first human city. Ayan. And his children, his grandchildren, they develop a lot of things. They develop musical instruments, they develop livestock racing, and metal tools. Grabe yung progress. Nag-umunlad yung city nila. Umunlad ang umunlad. However, kasabay nung progress, kasabay nung pag-unlad na yun, Cain and his family also develop more violence, more oppression, more, more, more violence against women, the powerful abusing the powerless. And you see, my dear friends, alam nyo, Genesis was written over 3,000 years ago. Pero alam nyo, ang totoo ito eh. I still see the stories of Genesis when I watch the news today. Lahat na nangyayari sa buhay natin sa mundo ngayon. Alam nyo, what do we have now? Yes, we have online technology. Grabe yung advancement sa technology sa lahat ng bagay. Grabe yung success, yung progress. However, those are empty progress because it's progress without God. And I believe in this progress without God is not real progress. Success without God is not success. And here's the scarier part, my dear friends. One day, all this progress and success will come crashing down. If you don't have God in your life Because if you remove God Gardens become graveyards The mountain of beauty will become a valley of bloodshed Ganun ang mangyayari That's why I want you to beware Because isn't this our personal experience too? If we act in pride If we act in greed In lust In selfishness And if we make excuses Twisting what God has declared bad And say that it is good at ito, masama. Minsan, gina-justify pa natin yung actions natin in the name of progress, in the name of success. Ay, nako. Beware. Because sooner or later, we destroy our life. And more importantly, the lives of the people that we love. And you know what, my dear friends? This leads us to our text today, to our word today. Here's what happened. Six chapters after the story of Cain and Abel, evil has taken over the world. Ay, nako, lumaganap ang kasamaan. And that's what I will be reading from Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. It says here, 
the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Grabe, no? Pansin niyo yung dalawang words. Consistently and totally. Ay, grabe. Let's continue. Now, God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. Lahat na. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Ay, grabe, no? Grabe, no? Pag binasa ninyo yung word of God natin ngayon, this passage is actually very disturbing. Bakit? Because it appears that the God of the flood is a punitive, angry God. Ay, disturbing ito, lalo na para sa ating mga Pilipino. Bakit? Di ba? A few weeks ago, a few months ago, we have just experienced three super typhoons sunod-sunod. And one of them being the strongest in recorded history. Ay, grabe. In fact, until now, meron pang mga baryo na lubog pa rin sa tubig. Katulad ng kwento kanina ni Brother Mike. Hanggang ngayon, nagre-relief operations pa rin tayo. Tumutulong pa rin ang Fis Alabang District sa mga taong ito. And you might be saying, Uy, teka lang. Baka nga pinaparusahan tayo ng Diyos. Which leads us to think this way. And it's common to think this way. Maraming nagtatanong nito sa atin, Did these storms happen because of our sins? Kaya ba bumagyo? Kaya ba bumabaha? Dahil ba sa kasalanan ng tao? Pinarurusahan ba tayo ng Diyos? Are we being cursed by God? And here's my answer. Alam nyo kung ano? My answer is absolutely no, 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 no. Ay, hindi ah, please lang. Klaro dapat yan. Hindi bumaba, hindi nagkakaroon ng kalamidad dahil sa kasalanan natin. No, no, no. It's not a punishment from God. At kung feaster ka, please lang, wag na wag sana naming mababasa sa newsfeed niyo, sa Facebook post niyo na ano, na yan, yan, pinaparusahan na tayo ng Diyos, kaya binabagyo, pumuputok ang bulkan, kaya tayo na COVID, kasi pinaparusahan na tayo ng Diyos. Ay, nako. Please, 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 please. Never, ever believe that. Why? Kasi hindi ganun ang Diyos. And today, I will explain why. And I believe this talk will blow your mind and open your hearts wide. Why? Because this talk will shatter some of our false assumptions about God's character. Are you ready for this? Kasi marami, karamihan sa atin yan ang tanong, eh, di ba? And let me continue, ah. The Bible describes God's anger in a more nuanced way than you think. And malayong malayo, kakaiba sa pagkakaintindi natin about human anger. Bakit? Iba kasi magalit ang tao sa pananaw ng Diyos. And in the flood story, etong interesting ha, never sinabi ng writer ng Genesis na galit ang Diyos. No, no, no. Not even once did the word wrath or anger appeared from Genesis 6 to 9. So the great flood was not a result of God's wrath. Instead, anong sabi nung text? Here's what the author of Genesis said. Let's move to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Ayan, ulitin ko. Sabi dito, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and He saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. And the next verse after that, here's what He says. So the Lord was sorry He had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke His heart. So the Lord was sorry na ano, na ginawa niya yung mga tao. And the word sorry here meant God was full of sorrow. He was full of sorrow. Lungkot na lungkot ang Diyos. And then one, one sentence after that, it says there that God was heartbroken. Ang tanong ko sa inyo dito, sino sa inyo dito ang nakaranas na ng matinding heartbreak? Paki-type ako sa comment section, pati paki-raise your hand sa comment section. So, yung mga ganyan, nakatin, nakaranas na matinding heartbreak, yung tipong pinuyat-puyat ka sa chat, tinanong-tanong, kumain ka na ba? Kumain na me, sleep ka na ba? Sleep, ka, sleep na ako, sleep na rin you. Tapos ito yung masama, ito yung masama eh, sa mga pinaasa dito, yung in, kung kailan ka invested na invested na, biglang boom! na wala na lang bigla, parang di kayo magkakilala. ba? Ang sakit. Heartbroken. And napakasakit yung 
nagmahal ka tapos hindi sinuklian pabalik yung pagmamahal mo. And why am I why am I talking about this analogy? Why? Because I believe God is heartbroken because God made those people because He loved them. And the problem is this. Those people whom He loved, whom He made, turned away from Him and did not love Him back. Here's the truth, my dear friends. God is in love with you and me. He is in love with us. And today, I just want to invite you to see His broken heart because every time we sin, every time God sees our wickedness, whenever we do wrong, He's heartbroken. He's heartbroken. And that's my prayer, that you see that God, in our sinfulness, has a broken heart. Now, I would like to dive deeper into this text and explain to you what happened. But first, let me guide you into prayer as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray this prayer after me. Put your hands over your hearts and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me to love you back. I want to restart my life. On my own, I can't do it. But with your help, I believe my love for you will be renewed. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Again, if you haven't done it yet, please like this video, please comment, please subscribe, and don't forget to share this video para hindi lang kayo nabibless, kundi mabless din yung mga tao na nasa timelines ninyo. Now, let us go to the meat of the talk. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. We're ready. My one big message for you today is this. Restart your life. Malalaman niyo bakit restart your life later on. But let me start off with the story. Alam niyo, a few years ago, uh, one day, my wife and I are going to a wedding. Papunta sa Tagaytay. And ang wedding, it's, it is scheduled at 2.30pm. However, because of our tight schedule, makakaalis pa lang kami ng paranyake ng 1 o'clock. So, saktong-sakto lang siya kung walang traffic. Ang problema ito, mukhang matraffic. Kasi nung pagka-login ko dun sa Waze, nung, nung, nung simbahan, ang sabi dun, base sa Waze, malilate kami ng 5 minutes. And so, dahil malilate kami ng 5 minutes, immediately, syempre, Gagawa ko ng paraan. Sabi ko, hindi pwede. Malilay tayo ng 5 minutes. Alam ko na. Meron akong alam na shortcut. Ang sabi ng misis ko ito, si Moriel. Sabi ni Moriel, Love, sundin mo na lang yung ways. 5 minutes lang naman tayo malilay. Eh. Baka maligaw pa tayo. Ito naman, syempre, si Belden na nagmamarunong, na feeling alam ang lahat. Diba? Ang sabi ko, relax ka lang. May alam akong shortcut. Sure ako dito. Dadaan tayo dito sa Pai Carmona, meron akong alam shortcut dyan, tapos lalabas tayo sa Aguinaldo Highway, yun, dire-diretso yan, sigurado ako dito, aabot tayo. So, yung misis ko, anong sabi niya? Eh, wala naman siya magagawa, ako naman yung driver. Ang sabi niya, ay nako, sige na nga, ikaw na nga lang bahala, total ikaw naman ang driver eh. Alam niyo ang ending? Pagdating namin doon, eto na, padaan na ako doon sa shortcut na alam ko, biglang sobrang traffic. Yung pala, kaya hindi kami pinadadaan din ni Waze doon. Kasi meron palang ang motorcade ng mga nangangampanya sa eleksyon. And so, nalit kami talaga. So, ang ending, dahil nga barado yung kalye, anong ending? Eh di, pinlog in ko ulit sa Waze, saan magandang daan. Nag-consult pa rin ako kay Waze. At ang ending, doon pa rin ako pinadaan sa Santa Rosa. <laughs> kaya, for that whole trip, for that whole one and a half hours, tahimik lang sa kotse. Shout out sa mga mag-asawa na nakaka-relate dyan. Pero ito nakakatawa. Pagdating namin dun sa Tagaytay, ito na, sabi niya sa akin, hmm, shortcut pala, hmm. Tapos, ito naman ako, natawa-tawa, kakamot-kamot ang ulo, sabi ko sa kanya, ikaw naman kasi, bakit hindi mo kasi ako pinigilan? <laughs> Nanisi pa, di ba? You see, brothers and sisters, why am I sharing this to you? Kasi, 
naniniwala ko, minsan ganun din tayo. At minsan, ganun din ang Diyos. I believe many times, my dear friends, we too insist on our own way and tell God that we know better. We make excuses, we disobey, worse, nagmamarunong tayo, nagmamatigas ng ulo. Pero alam nyo anong gagawin ng Diyos? You know what God, what God does? What God does is this. He will tell us, you wanna go there? Go ahead. Gusto mo? Eh di ikaw bahala. Ikaw naman ang driver ng buhay mo eh. And that's the beautiful thing about being human beings. He gave us freedom. But honestly, freedom is both a beautiful thing and a scary thing. Because if we use it according to God's will, it's a beautiful thing. But if we insist in our own way, it can be scary as it can lead us to our own destruction. And if we insist on our own foolish, sinful ways, here's what happens. God lets us taste the consequences of our wrong decisions. Buti na lang ito. Ang Diyos, parang ways din. God does not leave us. Even if we go in the wrong direction, He is always available. Isang click mo lang ulit. One call away. Isang prayer lang. And then heed His voice. Makinig ka lang ulit. So that when we finally realize na naliligaw na tayo sa buhay, we can, in, we can instantly turn to Him and restart our life and bring us back to the right direction. Amen? Do you believe in that? Now, let's continue. Why is this story important? Mamaya, I will anchor this story in this whole talk. And you see, brothers and sisters, sa unang tingin natin dun sa story nitong great flood na ito, we might think and we might look at it as this. Ah, okay. Because we sinned so bad at sa sobrang tigas ng ulo ng tao, papaluin tayo ni Lord. Para bagang yung great flood, yung pamalong sinturon na inilabas ni Lord, ah, ayan, ang tigas ng ulo mo, ha. Sige, dahil ang tigas ng ulo mo, ito, papaluin ko na kayo. Bang! Great flood. Ay, nako. Yun ang unang tingin natin na pamalo yun ng Diyos para disiplinahin tayo. However, biblical scholars say that if you analyze Genesis as a whole, and if you look at the entire Bible story, Actually, our key passage provides a different meaning. Bakit? I want you to understand this, that nabanggit na ito last week ni Brother Mike, malamang, that iba yung intindi natin sa cosmic worldview natin ngayon, sa cosmic worldview ng ancient people. And I want to show you this picture. Can we show it to them? I want, you to, I want to show you this picture. Kasi ganito ang pagkakaintindi ng mga tao nung unang panahon sa, sa itsura ng mundo. For them, ito ah, when God created the world, He separated the chaotic waters from the dry land. Ano yung chaotic waters? Pansin niyo yung blue na dome na yan. Ang, ang earth yan yung flat na nasa gitna. Tapos, makikita nyo meron parang force field ng kulay itim. Para sa, para sa kanila, ito ah, based on Earth's ancient worldview ah, yung waters above the sky, yan yung tinatawag nilang chaotic waters. In the same way, yung nandun sa ilalim ng mundo, those are chaotic waters. And based on the ancient worldview, ito ah, tingnan nyo pa rin yung picture. The universe existed because God was so good to us, He was holding back the chaotic waters. Ito ah. Nakita ninyo yung mga shield na yan, meron nakasulat, Windows and Doors of Heaven. Ang, ang paniniwala ng mga tao, kaya hindi umuulan, kaya, kaya peaceful yung earth, kasi ang Diyos sobrang buti, hindi niya, hina, sinishield niya tayo, pinoproteksyonan niya tayo from the chaotic waters. So, ayan. However, here's the problem. Sige, pwede niyo na ibalik sa mukha ko. Here's the problem. Man kept choosing chaos over creation. Because of our sinfulness again and again, we choose sin, we choose chaos over creation na napakagandang ginawa ng Diyos. Hence, the author of Genesis said this in Genesis 7.11, sabi dito, All the underground waters erupted from the earth and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. So ano nangyari? Yung, that meant that the chaotic waters which were under the flat earth, yun ang ancient worldview nila, hindi sila naniniwala kay Kyrie Irving. Ayan. 
it mer it it sprang up from the ground tapos yung yung durungawan ng langit yung windows of heaven binuksan na rin so ngayon biglang so nagmeet yung chaotic water sa taas tsaka chaotic water sa baba which wiped out Noah uh, every everyone except Noah during the great flood so Eto na, nakakasunod pa kayo? Ayan na, mag magandang trivia yan because we get into the proper context of this story. Now, what does this mean? Ibig sabihin, the great flood was actually the opposite of creation. The flood was a decreation. Decreation, meaning kabaligtaran ng creation. And that's what happens through sin you welcome chaos back into your life. Consequently, sin is decreation. Sinisira mo yung magandang plano, yung magandang creation ng Diyos kapag nagkasala ka. Sinisira mo yung napakagandang design. That's what happens when we sin. For example, ha? Ang ganda ng pamilya mo, ang bait ng misis mo, ang, ang okay yung mga anak mo. However, because of the sin of lust, na misinterpret mo ang great commandment, imbis na love one another, naging love another one. Patay tayo dyan. At dahil dyan, nasira yung pamilya mo. At nasira yung pamilya mo, you, you are now living in misery. Another thing is this, ang ganda na sana ng katawan mo, healthy, healthy living ka sana, etong problema. Binenta mo yung kidney mo para makabili ka ng PS5. O kaya para makabili ka ng kalahating sapatos ng Jordan 4 Manila na tag-350,000 sa resale market. <laughs> Yan, di ba? Ang ganda na. Healthy katawan mo. Pero ano nangyari? Ay, nainggit ka kasi. So, so that's what happens. Sin is the creation. Pero itong nakakatakot. Are you still following me? Itong nakakatakot. You know what's scary? When we choose sin, here's the scary part. That God lets us have what we want. Na kahit gusto mong piliin yung kasalanan, kahit masama yan sa'yo, hayang ka lang ng Diyos. And you would wish that God would stop you nung gagawin mo na yung kasalanan, nung ibebenta mo na yung kidney mo, nung, 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 nung mga ngaliwa ka na. You wish God would stop you, pero hindi ka pipigilan ng Diyos. Because in the words of my wife, ikaw ang bahala. Ikaw ang driver ng buhay mo eh. That is freedom for you, brothers and sisters. And boy, I believe that's really scary. Because it can be painful. Really painful. Pero ito, mas nakakatawa. Minsan, matapos mong gawin yung kasalanan, biglang nagdusa ka, habang nagdudusa ka, biglang sisisihin mo si Lord at sasabihin mo, ang bihira ka naman, Lord, ba't di mo kasi akong pinigilan? Ay, nako, minsan, mapapa-facepam na lang talaga ang Diyos pagkakausap tayo. But you know what? God will say to us, I believe this, ha? Uy, sasabihin sa'yo ng Diyos, Uy, tinray kita pigilan. Pero ayaw mo magpapigil, eh. Masyado kang nagmamarunong. And that's what happened, my dear brothers and sisters, to the story of the great flood. Man was destroying the earth, and it was like God accelerated its destruction to punish us. But in reality, it's this. When you sin, God does not need to punish you. Bakit? Kasi pag nagkasala ka, automatic consequence ng kasalanan ang destruction. Because at the end of the day, the Lord does not need to punish you because sin is its own worst punishment. Pag nagkasala ka, automatic consequence niyan is destruction. Ay, nako. Alam ko yan, bakit? Because, nanggaling ako sa masalimut na ganyang buhay. If you do not know me, uh, sa mga nakakilala sa akin sa Feast Bellevue PM, you know my story. I was a previous casino gambling addict and it really destroyed my life. And, ang tigas ng ulo ko, alam kong mali na yon pero tinuloy-tuloy ko pa rin. But you, want, you know what? If you are to ask me, what's the worst thing and the best thing that happened in my life? I will tell you, one of it, will be when I hit rock bottom with my gambling addiction. Nung naubos yung pera ko. Nung sobrang miserable ang buhay ko. Wala na nga akong pera. Tapos, uh, punong-puno pa ako ng guilt sa puso ko. And because of it, why is it the worst part? Kasi miserable ako eh. And nagamit ko pa yung pera ng family business namin, ng nanay at tatay ko. Talagang lugmok na lugmok ako. Wala. Zero. Palpak. Rock bottom. 
Yes, it was the worst part of my life, but I can also say it's also the best part. Why? Because, be, why? Because, because, because of it, I met God's unconditional love through the forgiveness of my parents. Ayan. At kung, when I look back, iniisip ko ito eh, siguro kung hindi nalimas yung pera ko, kung hindi naubos yung pera ko, at hindi nadama yung, yung, yung pera ng family business, ay malamang nagsusugal pa rin ako ngayon. At malamang hindi ako preacher ngayon, nagsasalita sa harapan ninyo. Kasi anandun pa rin ako sa kasino, <laughs> nagsusugal. But here's the thing, at that time, I thought God was punishing me. I thought God was trying to destroy me. Pero yun pala, that rock bottom moment in my life, that great flood in my life, will actually be my cleansing. It was actually my cleansing. Kasi ganun ang Diyos eh. Out of His compassion and great love for us, He will allow us to hit rock bottom so that we could bounce back and restart. And you see, my dear brothers and sisters, the Noah's Ark story, the Great Flood story, is actually not a story of destruction, but a story of salvation. Because God's goal was not to destroy you, but to rescue you. Uulitin ko, God's goal was not to destroy you, but to rescue you. That's why sometimes, The Lord will let us make mistakes and talagang maging dumausdos yung buhay natin para bagang binaha ng great flood in order to rescue us so that we can restart our life. My dear brothers and sisters, declare it today. Restart your life. Amen? Now, let me share to you three interesting elements in this story. Alam nyo dito sa story na ito, meron tatlong importanting elements to signi- that signifies God's love for us. Tatlong bagay yan. The ark, the mountain, and the bow. And et, ano yung bow? Bow yung pana. Yung yun, hindi si Bow Sanchez. Hindi, hindi, iba yun. Biro, biro lang. And these three messages, they give us three wonderful messages. The first element is the ark. The ark has this message. May sinasabi ang Diyos that I will give you another chance. You see, here's what happened in the story of Noah. Instead of wiping all of humanity from the face of the earth, God saves one good guy named Noah. And I believe in this. Noah represents the good that is still in us. Ayan, ang ganda niyan, di ba? Na sa kabila ng lahat ng kasalanan, ng kalokohan, ng kabalustugan na ginagawa natin, nakikita pa rin ng Diyos yung natitirang kabutihan sa atin. And because of that, in God's eyes, we are still worth saving. I want you to remember, balikan natin yung kanina, yung, yung cosmic worldview. Remember how God created the dry land as a divinely protected space for man? It's, a safe, it, it's safe from the chaotic waters around it. Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? The ark just functions just like the dry land. It allows life to survive above the chaotic waters. And in fact, the ark is actually Eden version 2.0. Na merong Eden sa gitna ng kaguluhan na yon. Everything is perfect. Everything is provided for. Everything is protected because of the, uh, the love and mercy of God for us. Now, why does God do that? That's the question. Alam nyo bakit siya nagpadala ng ark? Simply to tell you and me, and here's the message of the ark, Sure, you have failed me, but I will never give up on you. Yes, you have failed him, but God will never give up on you. Amen? That's the first one, the ark. The second one is this. Another important element is the mountain. And when the flood water subsided, here's what happened. It says there that the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Ayan, at pansin nyo, nasa mountain na naman tayo. You see, here's what happened. When Adam sinned, the ground, Eden, was cursed. But you know, here's the exciting part. Ito ang interesting ha. Ararat, ang meaning ng Ararat in Hebrew, it literally means reversed curse. So when the ground was cursed, God comes in to reverse the curse through Mount Ararat. What is the message 
of the mountain. The mountain is simply telling us that, hey, the ground may be cursed, but I will reverse the curse. Why? Because God is telling us to begin again. That's the message of the mountain. Begin again. Magsimula ka ulit. In fact, God even repeats the same words He told Adam and Eve to Noah and his family. Sinabi niya rin kila Noah. Anong sabi niya? Genesis chapter 8, verse 17, sabi niya, Be fruitful and multiply. Di ba sinabi niya rin yun dun sa Garden of Eden? Anong meaning nito? It just means that God has not given up on His call for us. Hindi siya sumusuko sa atin. God is still calling you. Be my representative. Be my partner. Be my co-creator. Be my image. Be my healing in this broken world. And you see, my dear friends, yung iba sa atin, minsan nagkasala tayo at feeling natin ang Diyos tinigil na ang pagtawag sa atin. Let me tell this, my dear friends, kahit nagkasala ka, kahit naligaw ka, yung tawag sa'yo ng Diyos, tawag pa rin sa'yo ng Diyos yan. It still stands. Bumalik ka lang. And God is giving you the chance to begin again. Amen? The third element in this story is the bow. Here's the beautiful thing. God does one more thing for us. Even if we mess up again, God promises to find another way to undo our mess. Alam nyo, itong story na yung great flood ni Noah, alam naman ng Diyos na hindi yan ang last na mag-mess up, na magkakamali, na magkakasala ang sangkatauhan. But here's the beautiful thing. Kahit na alam ng Diyos na magkakamali, magkakasala, that we will, tur- we'll, we will turn away our backs from the Lord, Here's what he promised. In Genesis 9.13 verse 15, he says here, I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. Never again will the flood waters destroy all life. Ayan. Nagpakita siya, naglabas siya ng rainbow as a sign of his covenant to, to tell us that he will never destroy the earth with flood waters. Ay, nako. However, ito ah, nakasulat doon rainbow. But in reality, in Hebrew, there's actually no word for rainbow. The original word that was used in the Hebrew text is bow. Bow meaning yung, again, yung pana. So the first thing that ancient readers would think of is the warrior's bow. Ayan. And what is the message of the bow? This bow is actually a metaphor telling us that, hey, that God is a warrior who lays down his bow. Ano si, sa Tagalog ng lay down, i, i, yung nilalapag niya yung bow niya. Because I want you to think about this. Huh? For a warrior, kapag nilapag mo yung weapon mo, nilabawa yung bow mo, o kaya yung baril mo, nilapag mo yan, you are practically making yourself vulnerable. Bakit? You are actually surrendering. You are actually losing control. You are allowing your enemy to possibly hurt you. And what's the beautiful meaning behind this? It means that when you hurt God, when we, when we hurt God, when we sin, God won't point, God, won't, God, God will lay His bow and arrow so that He won't hurt you back. Ibig sabihin, ang Diyos, sinaktan mo siya, ang Diyos hindi siya gaganti sa iyo. At itong mas maganda, uh, eto ha, tanong ko sa inyo, saan nakatutok yung bow? Yun ang magandang tanong eh. Tingnan niyo yung rainbow. Di ba yung rainbow nakatutok saan? Sa langit. Ibig sabihin, God is telling us that if things get bad, the bow will never be pointed at us. The bow will always be pointed at Himself at God because God's solution to humanity's evil is to suffer for us and this is the message of the bow my dear brothers and sisters that when you sin God is telling us I will suffer with you and for you I will suffer with you and for you. Hindi kanya, hindi ikaw ang mas, hindi ikaw masasaktan. Siya ang masasang, masasaktan. Hindi ba't yan ang ginawa niya kay Jesus? God Almighty disrobed himself of divinity. He, he went down here on earth. And he, 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 you know what happened? Jesus rejected by man through our continued sinfulness. Sinaktan siya. 
Pero ang ending, imbis na tayo ang magdusa para sa kasalanan natin, God imputed all, all the sufferings, all the pain, all the sin upon Himself. At ang ending, imbis na tayo ang magdusa, si Jesus ang nagdusa para sa atin. Isn't that beautiful? That our God, even when we sin, He will be the one who will suffer with us and for us. Amen? Let me end this talk with this beautiful story of a servant from the feast, another feast. And here is his life story. Alam nyo, meron... There's, there's this brother in the community when he was a young boy at around 12 years old, napasok siya kagad sa mga kung ano-anong bisyo. Nung kumpisa, nag-umpisa siya sa Yossi. Tapos nung nag siya, sinaway siya ng nanay niya, ba't ka nag malian, grounded ka. But later on, hindi gumana yung paalala ng nanay niya. Napabarkada. Nung napabarkada siya, lumala yung bisyo. Naging, naging alcoholic. At later on, nag improve na po-promote yung Yossi, naging marijuana, naging juts. Tapos later on, na-promote yung juts, naging ecstasy. Later on, na-promote yung juts, naging shabu, naging cocaine. And he tried all sorts of drugs. He became a drug addict. And you see, for so many years, yung nanay niya has been trying so hard to correct his path. So, tinray niya i-ground, tinray niyang pagbawalan, tinray niyang tanggalin yung cellphone. Ang dami na niyang tinray. He even, she even brought his son or her son to the rehab. And gumaling konte nung akala niya gumaling na, okay na sana. Pagbalik ito, bumalik dun sa dating barkada. Balik na naman sa pagiging drug addict. Balik sa dating ugali. Parang nasayang. So, right in front of her very eyes, she sees her son worsening and worsening and worsening. And this broke her heart. She was praying to the Lord, Lord, paano ko gagawin to? Paano ko itatama yung landas ng anak ko? Hindi ko na alam anong gagawin. But here's what happened, my dear friends. One day, yung anak niya, nandun sa kwarto niya, nagpapat session mag-isa, nagsosulo, nagsasabu. And then, Pumasok yung nanay niya, pagpasok ng nanay niya, sabi ng nanay niya, anak, anong ginagawa mo? And then, sabi niya, ma, wag ba akong pakialaman? Humihit-hit lang ako dito. You know what? You know what his mom did? Lumapit yung nanay niya, kinuha niya yung drug parafernalia ng anak niya, at nakihit-hit siya ng droga. And for the next hour, hit-hit yung nanay niya. Hit-hit siya. Alternate sila. Para silang barkada. Eh, tawa sila ng tawa. Eventually, they became high. But while they were doing it, her mom was actually crying. And it did not just went on for one day, one hour, no. The, the next day, nakihit-hit ulit yung nanay niya. The next day, kasama na niya mag-jamming. And alam nyo, it went on for days and then weeks and then months at umabot dun sa punto na yung nanay niya nasisiraan na rin ng bait dahil nasisira na ng droga yung utak niya but here's what happened one day by God's grace while they were having a pot session the Lord spoke to him and then right in front of him he sees the destruction not only of himself but also of his mom whom he loved so much. At sabi niya, Lord, ano bang ginagawa ko? Hindi ko lang sinisira yung buhay ko. Sinira ko rin yung buhay ng nanay ko. And you know what, my hap- what, you know what brothers and sisters? Here's what happened. That day, it has become their saving grace. That rock bottom moment became their saving grace. You know what? Dahil doon nagbago siya. Later on, he met the Lord in a community and then later on in the feast and then he began serving the Lord together with his mom and his life was restored. 
But you know what, my dear brothers and sisters? Here's the sad part. After years of service with the Lord, a few years ago, this brother of ours was taken by the Lord home. However, even if he was gone, it constantly reminds me of how God loves us. His story is a great reminder for all of us. Kapatid, why am I sharing this story to you? Because his mom is just like our God. Alam niyo ang Diyos, there will be times that He will He will allow you to worsen and worsen in sin. At minsan feeling mo, ba't hindi ka pinipigilan ng Diyos? But here's the beautiful part about God and His love. In our suffering, in our sinfulness, in our brokenness, God will come in and even allow Himself to be hurt by us, to suffer with us, to suffer for us. Kasi ganun ang pagmamahal ng Diyos. My dear friends, that story is Jesus on the cross. That is Jesus, our God, submersing in the dark waters and the great flood of our sin where He allowed the consequences of human evil, greed, and selfishness to overwhelm Him and His body. But here's the powerful truth and hope. On the third day, when Jesus entered our brokenness and sinfulness, when Jesus entered our worst state, on the third day, Jesus makes it through the waters of chaos to reach the other side. How? Through His resurrection. Jesus reverses the curse. And my dear friends, here's what I would like to point out. Kapatid, maybe right now you are suffering because of your own sin or any other consequences of your life. Hindi ko alam kung anong pagdurusa ang meron ka. You may feel like you are in the middle of a great flood right now. You are anxious. You are depressed. Maybe it's not because of sin, pero feeling mo binabaha ka ng buhay. Let me tell you this, my dear friends. God is willing to enter our flood. And here's the beautiful thing. In that flood, you can cling on to Jesus because Jesus is the new ark. Jesus is our new ark. Jesus is our safe place amidst this drowning waters around us. Kapatid, I don't know about you. Your life might be a mess right now. Storms are raging. The floods are raging. But one thing remains. You can always come back to Jesus our ark. He's with you in your floods. And one day I believe in this because Jesus is with us. I promise this, that Jesus, when He resurrects, He is going to raise you from your flood and bring you to your mountains. Amen.